Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me here today in the pit lane at the Salzburg Ring in Austria for some time out on track in this. Something I'm really quite excited about, the new BMW M2. We're going to be taking a look around the cars, prototypes of course, this is a pre-drive before the car is launched in the not too distant future. We can have a look at what lies underneath some of the camouflage and talk a bit about the details of this car that I'm sure you're looking forward to finding out. The engine, the S58 from the M3 and M4, the gearbox, both the 8-speed auto and the 6-speed manual, rear driven in all models and find out a lot more about it with some time out on track first in the automatic then in the manual afterwards and believe me i can't wait for this let's do it a pre-drive with the new bmw m2 Here it is then, a prototype of the new BMW M2. This is the second generation M2, codenamed G87. And although we've got a prototype here wrapped up in camouflage, we'll have a quick look around to take in some of the details of the design, what we can see through the camo and what we know about it so far before heading out to discover the driving experience on track here at the Salzburg Ring in Austria, thankfully in the sunshine, and I cannot wait. So the new M2 is based on the platform of the M240i, the CLAR, which means it will be slightly heavier perhaps than we might like but it compensates for that by borrowing the power plant from its bigger brothers from the m3 and m4 the s58 engine the three liter twin turbo straight six presumably it will be detuned slightly from those perhaps in the mid 400s region no doubt there'll be two different derivatives as we know with the different gearboxes the regular m2 and the m2 competition the competition being the auto with slightly more power than its manual sibling the regular m2 with the six speed gearbox as you can see from the car it follows the familiar m format We've got the quad tailpipes, we've got the wider arches, we've got big wheels, we've got big brakes, we've got lots into this car that upgrade it from the standard models. You can see the lip spoiler, for example, hiding behind this camouflage, a special design to celebrate the 50th anniversary of BMW M this year. We've got the heritage style BMW roundels worn at the back as well. So while we don't have much by way of technical data at this stage, these are going to be assembled over in Mexico, obviously available worldwide in the not too distant future. But visually around the front, notice some big changes, much more angular than its siblings in the two series family. Look at the grills here and this new design, very squared off, very high leading edge to those. Obviously lots of openings down here for the cooling to go through towards the engine. We've got the camo hiding lots of things with the new headlight shapes and design and styling as well. Not too much that we can take in fully of this right now, but this particular car if I come round just to open up the door very briefly has something a lot of us wanted to see the manual gear shifter and the third pedal we've got a clutch this is the manual version of the car obviously full camo going on inside at the moment we'll have the manual and the auto both out here in the pit lane very shortly to discover and experience both of them because as I said pre-drive an opportunity to find out what it's like the M2 has always been a bit of a breakaway from the bigger brothers in the family bringing some of that more traditional M3 ethos let's say lively agile and I'm rather hoping this is going to be quite a similar format so let's get ready to head on out and find out what these are like. Here we go, the automatic new M2. My first outing with this car. And of course, being a prototype, being heavily camouflaged, it is quite an unusual experience. We're in the track mode, so like the big brothers, it turns off all of the ancillary displays and lets you focus on just the information you need. For my first lap out, we're in the normal settings. So efficient, comfort, comfort, comfort. Basically, your road driving settings. Basically just being told to use the first lap here to get familiar with it, which I think is the logical. All right, it's looking very, very dusty out on track good sound out of the car, very familiar sound out of the car. Obviously with this engine shared from the M3, M4. Got a bit of a chicane to get things started. Oh, this feels quite fun already. Even just, obviously with everything super soft, I'm looking at all of the camouflage around me and kind of confused because it's unusual to drive on a racetrack in a prototype, but a very special opportunity to get a feel for this and to get a feel for the Salzburg ring as well as we go through this very, very tight hairpin before you have the super long sweeping sections of this circuit. 
as we are set up at the moment. So let's kick down. That's quite a lot of power. I mean, slightly detuned from M3, M4, but no shortage of oomph, we could say, from this. So we enjoy this little bit of an outing on the circuit today. I've only been here on one previous occasion. I did a couple of laps, but it certainly wasn't the fastest paced stuff. So I do need to learn a little bit about where I am and what I'm doing. Obviously we're on the Michelin PS4S's, so we don't have the full Sport Cup 2's, which I'm sure you could put onto this if you wanted to get even more grip from it through some of these tighter corners on the back part of the circuit. Make our way round to the straight. So we're going up into M1. This puts it into sport on the powertrain and on the suspension and on the steering. We still have comfort for the brakes though. Changes the feel with the integrated brake assist that we have in here. Firm on the brakes behind the M4 with it blinking away in front of us. Gosh, this is this is a quick thing. I mean, that wasn't the perfect line through there, but this is performance on par with M2 CS. Instantly, it feels like that. The M2 has always been a very fun car to drive, but this is really notching it up as we get some front tire squeal, but a nice balance. The joy of driving, obviously, the kick down. So I'm driving in automatic on the gearbox. Oh, nice upshift sound. Foot flat through here. Splatting bugs as we go on the windshield. Wow, we're at 240 kilometers per hour. I'm going to dab the brake a touch, so I'm actually catching the M4. Let's come around to the very heavy back parts of the circuit. You can carry a lot more speed through here. I overbroke myself there, thinking it was a little bit tighter than it is. Heavy on the brakes down towards this corner. So. Wow, this is some impressive cornering ability from this thing. Some of the tight, twisty corners here. Nice! Oh yes, this is what I hoped this car would do. This is what I hoped this car would do. This is brilliant. Oh, very happy so far. It's quick as well, you know. This is really quick. Firm on the brakes coming into T1. This is really, really fast. And it's got a lot of grip even on the PS4S's. This is my kind of driving, very stable on braking as well. This is a remarkably high performing car. I was not expecting it to be so fast, honestly. I mean, this isn't Mac 10, we could go faster. But for how we're driving, it's so confident. So much grip. My word. So we go up into M2 now. Press and hold the button. That's put us into MDM, Sport Plus powertrain. And we've now got sport on the integrated brake assist, and yes, I can feel the change in pedal response on the brake. It doesn't change the amount of braking, just the feel that you have from it. Oh, and the back wants to start sliding around. We're on this very dusty tarmac, and you can immediately feel that it's going for it. Obviously, I have the perk right now of driving the auto. The other car behind is the manual. This is really quick. This is awesome. Absolutely fantastic. I can't say that enough. Obviously, auto is normally my default preference for the racetrack. <laughs> it builds up speed so well, and it carries it well through here as well. We go onto the brakes before that little corner. Oh, I have the M smile. I have the M smile. Previously experienced driving the M5, the M8, and now today in this. Get those tires, tires squealing. Oh, 
this is fantastic. This is amazing. Foot flat down the straight. MDM is always brilliant. M dynamic mode is set up so well. And the gearbox is massively more suited to racetrack driving in the current settings, holding those lower gears a little bit longer, being ready to pounce and to give you that torque. My word, that was amazing. So let's take it back out of M2, automatically pop the gearbox into a more chilled out setting. That was a lot of bugs splattered, but we're going 260 something down the back straight there. <laughs> this is so fast on track. This is so phenomenally fast. Oh, wowzers. This is just, I, I am actually blown away. I'm genuinely blown away. It's not the loudest car in the world. The previous M2 never was from factory either, and nor are the M3 and M4 with all the sound deadening that's into the platform and obviously the windows, etc., etc. But that was fantastic. Sorry, I've said that way too many times. I never thought the auto would be so much fun. I'm sure the manual will be much more of a technical challenge. But if you want to do a lot of track work, that's, that's, right, in, that's right where you want it. This car is brilliant. First time I've ever driven a new two series of any form, not the M240i, straight in with the M2. What? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> M smile, let's leave it at that. I have a few moments to catch my breath while the cars are back out on track. In fact, coming past right now. Obviously with another set of drivers, until very shortly, I'll be hopping on board that manual car where things get much more complicated. There's a lot more that can go wrong, but I'm glad to have done my first laps back here at the Salzburg Ring in the automatic to get familiar at least with the layout of the circuit. All 4.2 kilometers, 12 corners, and that very, very fast back straight. It'll be quite interesting to drive the manual though to see this difference. So stay tuned. I'll be hopping back on board to give it a go. It's manual time. We have a gear shifter and a clutch pedal in the the new BMW M2 shared with the M3 and the M4. We're again in the track mode, so all of the data on the screen in front of me will start off in hey, efficient again, and in comfort mode, settings. We will adapt to the track and to the car, and in the second lap, then we will go faster. <laughs> First lap to warm up things a little bit, get used to it, then M1 for some laps with everything in sport, then M2 for some laps after that. Now looking at one of these in front of me, which is quite fun. Got to get used to this. I did do some driving in the manual M4, including at the Nürburgring Nordschleife. We've got the auto blip in here. The second gear for the chicane. Slightly less power, I believe, if the familiar format is followed. Okay, just getting into things a little, you feel a lot of torque. Obviously, it's such a different experience driving a manual and I think this is one that will often be discussed backwards and forwards as to which is the best no doubt the automatic is the fastest but hey it's not necessarily all about speed emotion doesn't necessarily mean you're going at Mach 10 electric cars being the case in point so obviously a little bit of unfamiliarity being a left-hand drive car for a UK driver who grew up with right-hand drive and doing the shift with the left hand, but still, it feels very good straight away. And this is just taking it easy. In fact, it's quite interesting to, I guess, give some thoughts about driving it gently as well, because ultimately these are road cars that just so happen to be very, very good on circuit because it's fun, because it's characterful. And that's something that I think a BMW M car needs. It needs that joy. And with the M3 having grown up so much to basically fill the boots of the M5, it's left this hole and the M2 CS did it so well. And this now steps in to do even more of that. Oh, clinging on, I don't have the fixed bucket, the carbon fiber bucket in this car. And obviously immediately feel like I'm sliding around a little bit more in the seat, despite taking it quite easily to get things started. So I guess for the straight, we're going to be going into 
M1. There we go, switch to M1. So we've got Sport. Still got a few, or rather the brake again, like before in comfort. Hear a lot more sound immediately. And there's just a lot more to think about when you're throwing a manual car through the corners. Onto the red line. Oh, that's cool. The kind of, I'm gonna say burp noise that it makes at a red line upshift. That's where a set of cup twos would just give us slightly more grip. <laughs> cool sound. Interesting, same when you lift off as well. <laughs> I tell you what, it's a wonderfully easy gearbox to drive with. It's again characterful, it's again fun. Just back off a bit as we catch the cars in front. And that's so much of what driving is about. This is actually a wonderful car to have experienced today to just get a feel for and we are taking it a little bit slower now than in the auto before but still it's just all round really good fun and that's quite often what you want that's what it's about just here with cup twos there'd be even more grip than the already very high amounts of grip that we have Enjoying the transitions as well. Straight back over. Now we'll take M2. Now we'll take M2. There we go, confirmed M2. I might be a little bit cheeky and let the cars ahead just pull away a touch so that I can play a small bit of catch up. <laughs> oh gosh, M dynamic mode, MDM. Wonderful, just a little bit more movement and obviously having the clutch pedal gives you so much more control over that. My word, the grip in here. This is so good. Up to the red line, 180, 190, 200 kilometers an hour, 210, 220, 230. Got a head up display, 240. Gonna reach to 250. I have to back off just a touch. Goodness. I'm actually very pleasantly surprised because I sometimes find if you're driving a manual car, you're just too distracted by the gearbox to really get the potential out of it, especially on your first ever outing in one. You know, when you're familiar with your own car and you've done thousands of miles, different story. But when you're hopping on, to, on board a car with a steering wheel on the wrong side, etc., it can be quite complicated. But in here, it feels very, very natural. It feels very easy, very organic, basically exactly where I would want it to be, exactly how I would want it to be, and very, very rewarding as well. Obviously, we've got the auto blip, which significantly helps with that, just matching the next gear, like in the previous generations, was also available. <laughs> I'm taking slightly funny lines, just testing things a little bit here. Gosh! You can probably hear that squealing away. Wow. Well, I tell you what, BMW M have made a cracker with this. What a car. I cannot wait for the full and final production version. So this is, yeah, this is a good one. This is a really good one. Hats off to the team. I'm enjoying this. I'm really enjoying this. Like, I know I say that sometimes, but 12 laps at the Salzburg ring in the new M2, and I am buzzed for the launch of this car. It's gonna be brilliant. It's gonna be absolutely brilliant. Nobody who drives either gearbox equipped version is gonna be disappointed. It'll be interesting to see which versions obviously reach which markets. But yeah, if I was being really pernickety, 
I'd like a smaller grip on the steering wheel, which I always say about BMWs, because you have to wrap your thumbs around so much. But outside of that, it's a nice step forward in things we can't talk about yet because it's a prototype, but also just in general, driving dynamics terms, which is what this is about. It's dynamically a league ahead of where you think a car like this would be. It takes the gap of the old M3. Well, as the M2 has done really, but this does completely now that the M3 has grown so much up, as I said, into the M5 style car. That was a gap waiting to be filled. Thankfully, BMW M have filled it. What more can I possibly say? That was an amazing drive in both of the cars. Truly superb, so much fun. And like I said, during the cool down lap, whether it's the auto or the manual, I don't think either is going to disappoint. They were both really quite awesome. And like I've said about quite a few modern cars, I've been surprised again by how well they disguise their weight. Yes, weight is increasing across the board with all of the requirements for homologation, for safety systems, for technology, for the luxury features we kind of expect from these cars as well. But this is super agile, which is what I said at the beginning. I hoped that they were going to make it more nimble, more lively than its bigger brothers, the M3 and M4. And that power plant is sublime in here. It works so very well. It's based around much of the same chassis, changing the stiffness settings. I think making it stiffer at the front, slightly softer at the rear, but it gives you so much more feel and response on the steering. And it really, really connects very, very well. The design of many modern BMWs has opened lots of discussion. So we won't necessarily go down that route until we see the car fully unveiled but to be honest it's been really quite a drive a really really good experience and I'm very very excited about this car I didn't think that I would have quite so much fun in it today I really when I drove the M2 CS was blown away by that the previous generation of course the ultimate final version of that previous or first generation M2 but the new M2 starting from this platform is in a very very good place to begin and while I might not have ever completely gelled with my G80 M3 that offered exactly what I thought it was missing. That drive, whether it's auto or manual, offered what I think an enjoyable, spirited, sporty BMW M car needs to offer. I'd probably go with the auto because I like driving on track and I think it's slightly more suited, but this on a nice mountain pass on a road trip, that would be right at the sweet spot as well. Gosh, that turned out to be really good fun. So I hope you've been able to come along and enjoy part of that experience with me, a pre-drive in the new BMW M2. That's it for this time though. Thank you very much for watching as always, guys. I appreciate your support an awful lot and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.